Hi, I'm Vince, and welcome to our channel. Today's video, we're going to start the disassembly of the uh, minivan. I'm going to start, I'll start to take this uh, back in here, and I'm also going to remove the, the old uh, inverter, or the new inverter. I'm going to remove all this back here, and I'll kind of do time lapse. We'll kind of show bits and pieces of it. I'm just going to start taking it out. When we get to the actual van parts, I'll show it. Of course, I've turned all the power off. Jupiter. And then felt Phillips screws. Four, five, six, looks like six of them holding this panel. Okay. Seven screws, not six. I'm trying to unhook this plug, but I'm not able to flip the plug over and see how the connector is working. So I'm going to try to take the plastic loose.
that's your piece that goes up and protects this part and this is all the this is all the insulation that you're provided There's the screws that switches to deal with. This is the plug that's behind the uh, accessory. We can, we can show your accessory plug. And the way this comes, it's, it's upside down so you can't see it. But the way it comes off is there's a you can see the blue part has a little clip that clips into the gray you have to lift the gray to get the blue to come under that little clip right there clips on this it, it when it's upside down there was no way to see it but like I commented earlier this wire is pretty small to be feeding a refrigerator so, I, I question now if this is wired big enough for what we're trying to use it for. I'm trying to remove the rear seat belt, and this is the main bolt that hooks it. And just to show the struggle of getting this one bolt out, I'm having to leverage a <laughs> cheater bar that's two and a half feet long to get this in it and it, it's still struggling so this is not easy to get out just so you know we will be taking it out and I will continue I'll, I'll probably end up cutting it I'll probably come in and cut it because it's it's so difficult to turn it that it'll be I've gave myself enough space where I can get a saw bl a blade in there now and probably cut it That's how you fix it. You can see now that we've removed the plastic, how much space is between where the bed is and the wall. So here we can create a cabinet that's can be accessed from the front. And then across here, in our instance, I want to make the bed so that we can lay in the bed and look up to the, the window at the stars. Most people are, would take advantage of this and I would say you could build a cabinet clear up to here that comes over all the way to this edge over here. So you could, you know, this is, this would be huge. You, you'd have, you could have access, you could have cabinets that you got into. What we're going to do though is we're going to capture this area right here that even when you swing the kitchen in and out still there's a rather large area the coffee maker i wish i had it in here with me will suspend well first thing i'll do is hold the coffee maker in here and decide where i want it and then i'll build from there and then we will go down but it but normally most people i would think you'd want to build this all in so if you're a single person you might only have to need the narrow bed 
and you could build even a larger cabinet over here. This is a lot of space. For two people, you wouldn't necessarily even need the, the swing out. You might just run the bed all the way to the back for, so that if you're, if you're six foot tall or over six foot tall, you'd have plenty of bed space. You could easily do a pull-out kitchen underneath that pulled out from underneath. Then you could have some sort of access from the top. So there's just lots of options, lots of space, lots more ways to do it than what I did. So, but just to, just to, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to try to create some sort of cabinetry and I'll take you along for that.